This is Velo Stewart, writer, actor, producer, director, DJ. He has a great love and appreciation for filmmaking. This is Q Nice, poet, actor, producer, director, music, curating specialist. He has a great love and appreciation for music. So what do you get when you put the two of these guys together? You get a very special event called Music and Movies on the Zoom platform this Friday. Start time is 8 8 p.m. Pacific Standard. Join Music and Movies and say hello to the rest of the crew. Say hello to Gwen, Carmen, Clarence, and Fred. So put on your dancing shoes and get ready to pop the popcorn from Music and Movies on the Zoom platform. Sponsored by Trail Vision and the Quentin Finley Collection. Is it vegan? Uh, today we have Clinton Roach, who is here to speak with us about Sweet Rhine, a uh, film that will be uh, shown in the Conk Show uh, International Film Festival in May. Clinton, how are you? Doing great, thanks. How are you? I'm great. I can't complain. Please tell Good. us your story in terms of uh, the passion to, um, it, to work in film, to be a writer. Where did this all come from? Well, I guess it's a uh, result of how I was raised. I was raised among a lot of storytellers. You know, we told stories. Uh, so that's where it pretty much came from, the art of storytelling. Uh, not sure if it's genetic or not, but just being around the environment. Uh, we used to, for example, it was normal for people to uh, gather, like they say, in, um, after supper, the community would actually go around and we stop, you know, different houses and we talk, share stories. So I used, as a kid, I used to listen quite attentively as to, uh, you know, about the stories that were actually being told, you know, so I kind of sparked the imagination. And later on, I, um, even though I actually studied sciences, I'm in the sciences, science field, but uh, there's always a, a pull towards artistic side. And uh, started writing poetry maybe uh, over 10, 12 years ago. So it naturally led into uh, screenwriting. Excellent, excellent. And um, where did you come up with this concept for Sweet Ryan? Like, where did that come from? How did it originate? Okay, well, Sweet Ryan is actually the fourth uh, script I've actually written. I have other ones that's you know, actually, I was actually, I've been working on for the last 10 years or so. Uh, but Sweet Ryan, actually, three things triggered it, right? Uh, number one, I, uh, like most Jamaicans, I'm actually very concerned about the, uh, uh, the state of the country, crime and violence, right? So I started writing um, something about that, right? And, um, but I, was, I wasn't sure as to the, as to the direction, right? That's where I want to take it. I know it has to be a story that actually uh, dealt with directly, that, uh, that, I'm sorry, that actually dealt directly with the state of affairs in the country, right? So I was actually on a trip to, uh, in Suriname and I went to the uh, Afro, uh, the African Museum uh, in Suriname and I learned there about the plight of the Maroons, right? So uh, being Jamaican, we know we, we, we do have Maroons here and they actually, were a critical part of the struggle, right, in terms of our, our liberation. Uh, so asking questions, I realized that the tactics used then by the Maroons during liberation was similar to what were used uh, in Jamaica, right? Uh, the escaping, the rebellions, and so forth. So that kind of, my eyes kind of opened up to say, well, you know what, there's a whole diaspora um, that has a similar um, experience. So what actually really separated us was language, right? So you have a Spanish speaking, Dutch speaking or French speaking uh, peoples of the Caribbean, South America, but the experience is actually quite common. It's a very similar thread. So that kind of made me realize, okay, there is a commonality here and we're all the same, same experiences, going through the same struggles, but we're separated by geography and also by, by language, right? And so I, I took some pictures and uh, I gave my, my niece and my nieces and nephews a, uh, uh, a summer job to write me an essay on their interpretation of what they feel about uh, uh, the pictures. They were actually pictures of slaves and so forth, right? So uh, two of them 
Uh, we lost your audio. Sorry, am I back? Yes, you're back. Can you pick up what you say? You ask them to write an essay or you write, write yes. to? Yes. So write an essay about what their interpretation. Now, the pictures were, were of uh, slaves combing hair, right? And so the, the idea of the abang came up. And studying the history of the abang, it was actually used as a tool for communication, right? So bring that forward. A lot of crime, local crime, was actually caused by what we call scamming, right? So people using phones to uh, make calls to deceive, right? So there's a similarity there, the, the abang and the, uh, and the phone. So the abang was actually used as a tool in the liberation. The cell phone is also a communication tool, but it's, it's actually used in a, in a way to deceive. So that's when the light bulb went off. I can actually merge the, uh, the ideas, right? So I started writing. So I do have a, 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 a there's actually a feature film. So what we actually seeing in the, in the festival is actually short, uh, a, a snippet of what's actually covered in the feature film. So it's about our, our legacy, our struggle, our history, and how we, we take things for granted. And if we're not careful, we can lose it all. So that's in a nutshell, <laughs> what, what, really, uh, what, what really inspired it to tell the truth and to uh, force us to have introspection, to kind of dig deep and, and talk about things, right? Let's be honest, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, be honest. And uh, call a spade a spade, a chair is a chair, most times and not making excuses because as we go through the film, you're gonna see a lot, there's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of um, subtle things or messages, right? Uh, the film talks about our history or legacy and how people or some folks are not willing to make the sacrifice to continue the legacy. So it's a get rich quick mentality, but in the process, we're actually destroying the, uh, the threads that basically ties us or binds us as, as a people. So we have to be very careful and be honest if we want to, uh, our society to actually survive. I like so, that. Yeah, I, like, I like that. I like what you're saying in terms of the whole idea of like, you know, it can disappear. Like one yes. phone call, one yes. phone call that comes in and you're just thinking it's all, you know, something's true, something's real. It's all that. And it winds up being a scam can just take a whole generation or a whole group of family members down the wrong, wrong path. And if you're not careful, you know, and, and being able to like look around and see what's out there. Yeah. It can destroy a lot. So I, I, I feel that I, I definitely feel that. And um, I like that. I like that. Thank you. And how long did it take you to make this film? So you say it's a piece of the feature. So how long did it take to, to, to make this from, from the point that you came up with the concept and started writing all the way till everything was done? Well, the, uh, the script for the, okay, because I'm already writing the, uh, the expanded, feature film, it wasn't difficult to just tailor a piece uh, for, for the movie. So it took me uh, several weeks maybe to, to take that part out. It's actually uh, from one part of it, or that's one aspect of the story. There are actually many layers to it. So it was easy to kind of extract that. So it took me several weeks to uh, polish it up, so to speak. Uh, shooting, we uh, shot over, I think, four days, four to five nice. days was after shooting. And uh, then we actually went through the issue of uh, editing the post work, took a little bit, you know, uh, maybe a year or so to kind of finally be completed. Nice. And since then we've actually rolled out to uh, a number of festivals. To date, I think we've actually been accepted in 47 festivals uh, uh, globally. I mean, it's, it's interesting. We, we've, uh, from Brazil to Africa, India, Russia, even Russia. So ironically, we, we've had, a, I think in Brazil, we've, uh, we've been accepted, I think, in three different festivals. So I think the film is such a, such a note in, in Brazil. So, and we're still pushing, we're still uh, entering. I think today we've got maybe uh, 14 awards total, but the, the, the effort continues. Uh, the final script, the draft, the final draft is done. So, you know, we got to go through uh, 
several iterations of tidying it up, so to speak. But we're, we're on track. I'm quite pleased with the progress uh, so far. And, and for the for the feature, will it be the same director um, who will do the feature uh, do the bigger piece or? Well, that's the thinking. But of course, you know, funding is a uh, yeah. it is a strange thing. And oftentimes when people might say, OK, I need to I'll put it, put my resources behind it. But um, uh, so they might have a say in, into what happens. But my 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 mission is really to. We've had a very supportive crew uh, right. in Jamaica, so to bring it local, local talent, uh, and so forth. Right, and and for the next project, and I definitely understand what you're saying. Like, yes, they come with the the finances. Like, hey, we got this person as an actor. Can we get this and this? Yeah, so I definitely understand how things can can kind of move around with the financing. Um, and then uh, again, for the feature, will you do more festivals, or do you already have like distribution kind of lined up for this once it's done? Well, the plan right now is to uh, is to to shoot and uh, definitely more festivals. We have our eyes on a bunch of few of the larger festivals, right? Mm -hmm. like if putting some words out there, it'd be nice to uh, uh, get get uh, accepted at TIFF and a couple of the other ones, uh, larger ones, to gain momentum. Because I think once it gets out there, we will have enough critical mass uh, because the story is true and it relates and. People globally can actually relate to uh, to the story, mm -hmm. right? So, all everything was to fall into place after that. After that, I um, I imagine. And that's true. And, and you mentioned by being able to relate. Yeah, I, I can 100% relate in terms of I get at least oh my gosh two or three spam calls a day. Yes. Where someone's like, you know, saying something that's like that sounds believable. The warranty on your car needs to be, so. This is something that we all can can definitely um, kind of relate to uh, across the planet. Um, and so, your um, biggest challenge it was it getting started or keeping going. What was the biggest challenge you would say in, in working on this project? Well, the biggest challenge it was it was the first time, <laughs> first time. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, that were actually new, uh, new things. Um, so for me, the biggest challenge was the uh, information uptake as to who does what, what a crew looks like. Uh, there, are, there was actually a lot of work. The producer did a lot of work did in terms of gathering uh, the team. So having the right team and having schedules uh, lining up was a critical thing, right? Because we have some of the best uh, and brightest minds in Jamaica, but they all have, all have other projects. So the challenge was to get things lined up uh, I have a, the film shot. Most of it was after like night. It was actually a night shooting. So, uh, you know, how to do the challenges there at night. But uh, I guess coordinating uh, the talent was one of the big things. Uh, and once we've uh, edited, once we actually went through the editing process, uh, we've had several versions of the film, right? So it, initially we, 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 we did some applications that we weren't successful because we didn't know what they were actually looking for. Right, so we went back to the drawing board and uh, uh, did some re-editing, remixing, improving the sound and so forth and putting it out. And after we actually did that, then the acceptance is where we start getting a lot more um, uh, traction or acceptance, you know. So now let's say we're 47, 45, 47 festivals, 45 nominations, 14 awards and one special mention. And I think three honorable mentions in 23 countries uh, across the globe. So. That's so impressive. That's so, 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 so impressive. And so at uh, the Conch Shell uh, International uh, Film Festival, why is this festival important? Um, and what are your hopes for having your film shown here? Well, I think the, f the festival actually was speech of the diaspora. Um, and it's, it's who we want to be at the table with a discussion uh, and ways forward. So for us, this is a very it's targeted festival. And uh, so from it, I, I hope, as I mentioned, uh, to increase the dialogue, the awareness, the following, following, uh, because the the, uh, the feature will be made. So, uh, I, I, and also to, well, for the, uh, the networking aspects of it, I'd like to uh, meet more people and bring them into the fold as we move forward. 
Excellent. 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 And how can people fo follow you or find out more and website, social media? How can we learn more? So we're at Sweet Ryan the Film, I think, on all platforms. Well, thank you very much, Clinton. I appreciate uh, your time. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you again uh, while the fe festival is happening or right after the festival is complete. And we wish you the, the very best. Thank you. And just, I hate to do this, but just, just the, the people who've actually worked on this tirelessly, mm -hmm. uh, the, the lead actors and uh, the director, Andre Winter and, uh, and, and crew, they did a very excellent job. So uh, kudos to them as well.